Hey, how's it going on, guys? Welcome back to one of my longer, more production-valued videos. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite game franchises since I was a little kid. It is Sucker Punch or Sucker Punch Entertainment. Depends on how you guys want to say it. I just call them Sucker Punch. They've changed their logo over time. It hasn't been exactly the same as it has been before, but just want to go over what I think they've been up to recently guys the last thing that they have came out with is sucker or sucker punch games anyway where it was actually made in studio sucker punch has helped produce some games but a sucker punch like only game the last thing they've ever actually made from themselves is infamous second son which came out in 2014 followed by the infamous first light DLC which came out sometime after it but I feel like to do the games justice, we should go back to the you know, the beginning. Basically, this is a whole overview of all of their games and things like that. But starting it out since 2008 um, it was one of the games that I think they actually ended up canceling. It was called Victor and Stan, or at least it did come out, and it just really wasn't very popular, I guess. But dating all the way back till 1999 was technically Sucker Punch's first actual game release with a game called Rocket robots and I've never played that game but as most people know they probably never began there either they probably started with the Sly Cooper series Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus came out in 2002 Sly 2 Band of Thieves came out in 2004 Sly 3 then came out just one year later with Sly 3 Yarder Among Thieves and you can see that there's a pattern here usually it was two years for them to come out with a game you know Sly Cooper and Thievius Raccoonus Two years later, Sly 2, but it was only one year later that Sly 3 came out, and a lot of people had a lot of problems with how Sly Cooper 3 was. Too many characters, the game, honestly, graphic-wise, didn't look any better. It looked almost just the same as Sly 2. It really didn't have that m much of a graphical, like, improvement. It almost looked exactly the same. So, as you can imagine, it, you know... It didn't go over very well, and I think that might have been what triggered them to only do games in groups of three. And it seems like every third game, if they keep doing a franchise like Infamous or Second Son or the Sly Cooper series, they only do them in threes. And the third one always ends up being kind of different. And I don't know if people have been liking that. Probably not. But jumping from Sly 3 in 2005, they went to Infamous in 2009. So they had a longer period there, but as most people did, whenever they jumped to a new console, that meant, you know, they could do a lot more things, and they jumped to actual human beings instead of animal-like creatures that would, you know, you'd play as those, and they'd have human-like, you know, features and things. Instead, they jumped to actual humans with Infamous. And that was in 2009, and with the PS3 coming out, it had more power, and it looked absolutely amazing. And there were a few Easter eggs. There's been Easter eggs for the Sly Cooper games in pretty much all of the infamous games. And then 2010, they released the Sly Cooper Collection, which was all three games released on the PS3, and they look a lot better. If I were you guys and you wanted to play the Sly Cooper series, I would recommend the Sly Cooper Collection because they fixed a lot of things. Graphics-wise, it looks better, and overall, I think it's just a cooler looking game visualize um, I've never really seen any differences in terms of gameplay when it comes to the Sly collection and the original but there's only one thing the audio syncing thing can go out sometimes and whenever you play a boss battle in Sly Cooper 1 called Miss Ruby she sends at you a different attacks and you have to match them up and sync them up with audio kinda like Guitar Hero in a way not exactly, but it's kind of like that gimmick, and the actual audio is out of sync with it because of the remix. I don't know if they patched that or not, but that's just definitely a thing I knew from before. And then in 2011, they came out with Infamous 2, following Infamous Festival of Blood DLC, which was, for a while, probably one of the best DLCs ever to even release. Definitely the best DLC, I think. That Infamous has had. It's more of a what if scenario with Festival of Blood. But Infamous 2 was a very big improvement from over Infamous 1. Infamous 2, in my opinion, is probably the best Infamous game. But, you know, each their own. Infamous 1 has certain things I like. Infamous Second Son obviously looks so much better. I think the story with the characters interacting and stuff like that is a whole lot better in Second Son. However, 
I feel like Infamous 2 has cooler powers. The power is a bit more unique, and you branch off to like fire powers, kind of. It's kind of like Delson's smoke power in a way, and you also get frost, so you deal with a bit of different powers. It's not like Infamous Second Son, where you're dealing with like, you know, four completely like different powers, you know what I mean? He kind of blends it in with Cole and Infamous. He kind of blends in these different kind of, you know, powers. He uses them all kind of at once in different ways. So you can kind of mesh them all together, like you can do an ice attack and jump in the air and then switch to this and then do that. It's a little bit different, but I actually enjoy it. I think it's really, really fun, actually, to have. But, you know, it's a karma choice. The Infamous series always have big karma choices. And then, 2014, jumping over to the PS4, they still kept the Infamous franchise. This is what kind of puzzled me a bit. I figured them jumping to a new console would make them want to change again because PS2 was sly that Infamous would have been PS3 and the PS4 would have been something different but they didn't do that they stuck with Infamous and it was actually a first release on the title but excuse me as most people know whenever a game first comes out like on a PS4 or something like that it's not using all of its power. It's not using all of the PS4's power, it's only using what they were given right off the bat. It's only using a certain amount. It's not using the full extent of it yet because they haven't had time to work with the new software for the new console. So Infamous, another game coming out like this year or next year, which I don't think is going to happen, honestly. I think they're done with Infamous. I hate to say that because I feel like there is something more. I think there needs to be one more game that finishes it off and just completely concludes the whole story because if they ended it off now I definitely feel like it would be very very just weird but Uncharted's coming to an end I think it's a perfect time for Infamous to come to an end and then do that I want Sucker Punch to branch out and do other games and stuff like that and make games that are different and not just feel like they're constantly being able to you know, only do infamous games. I want them to branch out and do other stuff. I know it was super professional having my phone go off in that time, but sorry. <laughs> anyway, I feel like they definitely need to branch off to a new kind of game. They could keep the same, like, engine, like the infamous engine, and have a third person game. I think that'd be very cool for them to have. Keep that kind of same style, but use it and do it in a different way. I don't think there should be another infamous game where you play as a different character or whatever. Although, if they had to make another infamous game, I feel like that would probably be the best way to go as a new character again. Or be as Cole, because we're supposed to think that Cole's still alive. Because it's the good ending. The good ending in Infamous has Cole being alive. Oh, wait, no, the good ending has him being dead. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. No, he hasn't been dead. He kills himself in Infamous 2 to save the world, basically. Although conduits are still a thing, they're still around and doing their own stuff. They're still there. But he kills off a lot of bad enemies doing what he has to do at the end of Infamous 2. Sorry if it's a little bit spoily, but, um, you know, I gotta discuss this in case, you know, we need the information to be able to talk about what they would do for another game. They would be left in a world where Delson has done this. He's done his game. He's beaten the enemies he's had to be beat. You know, Delson's probably the strongest conduit. I would imagine he'd be the probably the strongest conduit at this time. Cole would have definitely been much stronger. Cole is stupid strong. And the thing is, he kills pretty much everything else that might have been stronger, including the beast. The beast was stupid strong. He turned into a giant. He was, like, impossible to kill. He literally had to kill himself to keep the beast, you know, from being able to terrorize everything else. Quo's dead. Nyx is dead. Everybody else dies. And it leaves almost nobody with powers, pretty much. Except for people around Delson's area. People on the other side of the United States. People on the eastern side of the United States are completely gone. There is almost no conduits whatsoever. So if there's going to be another game, I mean, we've already explored the western side of the United States, being in Washington. 
So we've kind of done that. So the eastern side's done. No conduits there, pretty much. Western side, done. If they're going to do another infamous game, it's going to have to be out of country. It's going to have to be in, like, maybe China or Russia or Japan or, you know, just anywhere else. Because I feel like there's almost no conduit threat left in America because Delson's a good guy. He's in the West. He could take care of anything else on the West. Eastern side people of the United States. All the conduit powers are gone. The plague is gone. There's nothing there anymore. There's almost no conduits left. We're to assume that the game is only a couple of years after Cole's done everything. We're not. I don't think it's like super, super like long afterwards. I doubt more people that had powers migrated over to the eastern side of the United States. So there's probably nothing there. So it has to be out of country. Maybe in Mexico or something like that. Even then, though, I think the Ray Sphere Blast that Cole uses to destroy all conduits on the eastern side of the United States. I don't think there's nothing there. Even, like, in lower parts, like in Mexico or maybe even Canada, I think it's blasted that far away. There's pretty much, like, only people with powers in, like, Washington, where you play here in Seattle. I think there's nothing else left on the eastern side of the United States. And if they were going to pull off a game that way, there would be almost no conduits to fight. There'd be almost no conduits, including yourself, who would be in, like, the eastern side of the United States. So that's why I believe if they're going to do a new game, it'll be a new character... It'll be in a new, like, continent, maybe? It might be, like, South America or somewhere in Europe, probably. I think a Europe game would be really cool. I think playing in, like, Great Britain would be a fun idea, or playing in Egypt would probably be a fun idea, although I don't think that would work too well. Maybe if you had, like, sand powers? I don't know. That's the really hard thing. Picking out a new character and designing them is probably isn't too hard, and picking a location probably isn't very hard either. It's what powers are they going to actually utilize. I think playing in like Venice or something like that and have powers over water would be cool because you could actually pick up water like right out of, you know, the little lakes that go by people's houses and stuff like that in Venice because Venice is like set up that way. I think that would be a very easy game to make, but. There has a lot of development that comes into Infamous Games, and they've had three years. Three years they haven't done anything. It'll be four years if it comes out next year, which I don't think nothing's coming out this year. I think we clearly would have saw something in E3. So it's going to be another four years of development on something. Whether it's not an Infamous game or anything, it'll be at least four years of development on a new game that Sucker Punch is doing if it comes out in 2018. If it doesn't, then it'll be a five-year development cycle, which is a lot of development, but with how games are made nowadays, I definitely feel like it's needed. I definitely feel like if they need to put that much development to their next game, it'll be good. Sucker Punch games are always good to me. I feel like they're good in all their you know special ways. Infamous games have different tweaks here and there with each game, and I still enjoy all of them regardless. They're all fun games. I definitely play those games over a lot of other games that have came out as of late. You know, they take their time, put a lot of development into it, just like Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog takes their time, puts development into the games. They don't kid around with the development of their games. They take how their games are to heart, you know what I mean? They're not Call of Duty where it's a new one every single year, even though there's new developers, you know. They don't just throw out a game and say, hey, 50 bucks for a season pass, blah, blah, blah. It's not like that at all. So, that's my thoughts on Sucker Punch. <laughs> and a new Infamous game. Do I think they'll do Sly Cooper? No. No, I think Sly Cooper's done. I hate what Sanzaru did to Sly Cooper. You hear that a lot, that, you know, back then, whenever they were trying to make the Sly Collection, Sanzaru Games was in charge of it. Sanzaro and Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch didn't have a lot because they were, I think, working on Infamous. They were working on Infamous 2 at the time. They didn't have a lot of time to remake the games. And maybe Sucker Punch didn't even want to, honestly. They probably didn't. You know, Sucker Punch moved on. They were done with that franchise. You can't blame, a, you know, a group of people from not wanting to deal with the same thing they've been dealing with for eight years. It's like been eight years of Sly Cooper games. They don't want to do that anymore. They're done. You know, they told their story, they had it on a little bit of a cliffhanger if just in case they want to continue the story. A lot of things end that way. I almost liked it better because you could have just thought 
in your own head and made your own conclusion to what happens at the end of the Psyche Cooper series instead of just having to keep on just, you know, have Sanzaru say, I don't think they're going to have time for another Psy Cooper game. This is after the Psy Cooper collection where they put in a little teaser to a new Psy Cooper game, which really got me hyped because I thought maybe Sucker Punch was going to pick up on it. I was like, there's no way Sucker Punch is going to let Sanzaru games make another Psy Cooper game. There's no way. I didn't think of that. I didn't even have that in my head. I thought, oh, it's going to be Sucker Punch, right? It has to be Sucker Punch because they were done with Infamous 2, so I'm like, oh, they're going to have you know another Psy Cooper game instead of another Infamous game. Which I didn't know how to feel because I love the Infamous games and I love the Psy Cooper games. Honestly, I was happy for either, but you know, that's not what happened. Sinzaro Games, the people who helped make the HD collection of Psy Cooper, ended up making it themselves. Of course, they had the rights and everything from, you know, Sucker Punch. I'm sure they, you know, they just didn't just up and do it. <laughs> you know, they had people from Sucker Punch helped them with art and stuff like that, I think. But overall, it was Sanzaru who made Sai Cooper Thieves in Time, which is technically Sai 4. And it's it's not a Sucker Punch Sly Cooper game. Not at all. And I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it does not feel that good. It feels... It just plays and feels weird. Just really weird, and I don't enjoy it one bit. I feel like if Sucker Punch would have had the wheels on it and would have did it themselves, I think they would have made the game so much better. I feel like Sanzaru really butchered the game and made it bad. I do not like Psych Cooper Thieves in Time one bit. The original three, I love them to death. I think they're all great games. Psych Cooper 3 is a little eh, but I'd still play Psy 3 over Thieves in Time any day. Because I love the story, I love the worlds, I love the atmosphere of the characters. Overall, it's all a en very enticing and great story, and I love the game mechanics as well. I just think it's an overall great game. Sly Cooper games, 1 through 3, good. <sighs> Sly 4, no. No, not good. Not good. Or Thieves in Time. I don't. I think they did that on purpose, but it's not good. I just want to pretend it's a dream, and it didn't happen. <laughs> That's a dream. It's not true. That ever happens, but I think it's going to be it for today's video, guys. So that's my thought on Sucker Punch and their development. I believe, I think they will do an element from this game. I don't think they should, but I do think deep down Sucker Punch, with the community, everything is going to make one. If they don't make a Sucker Punch game, I'm going to be happy for them. I'm glad that they can move on and go past it, although it's really being left on a cliffhanger. I just think Sucker Punch is in kind of a weird place, having to deal with the fourth game. I mean, Naughty Dog made Uncharted 4, you know. They're the same kind of people who did 3s as well. Jack and Dexter 1 through 3, then they did like a cart game, and then that was it. You know, they left it at that, and then the next console came out and they moved it again. So Naughty Dog and Sucker Punch have a lot of similarities, ending in with like only 3 games, but... As you know, Naughty Dog came out with Uncharted 4, so there could very well be a, you know, infamous 4 as well. But, that's just speculation. <laughs> I'm just saying it might be that Sucker Punch has seen Naughty Dog do this, so they might be more open to the idea. But, that's going to be it though, guys. If you like this video, if you like these kind of videos, and put down in the comment section below what gaming franchise should I talk about next? What do you think is going on with some other game franchises? I'll look them up, guys. I'll do my research. I'll figure it out. I might come up with more, some more stuff on some more gaming franchises in the future. But thank you all for watching this video. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more content, or if you like this video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.